I'm happy to be joined on the Mattress Warehouse Hotline by our pal Mike Rizzo, President of Baseball Operations and General Manager of the Washington Nationals. Today is Giving Tuesday, which is an annual day to give back this year. The Nationals Foundation is raising money to support its Youth Baseball Academy. The kids and communities surrounding the academy have been the hardest hit by the pandemic, so all donors give $100 or more. Look at a Nats Academy face mask. You can go to natsacademy.org to learn more and donate today. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? What's up? Doing all right. How have Hello. the last uh, few weeks and months gone for you? Well, you know, they're, uh, we're like everybody else. We're, uh, you know, staying close to home and, uh, you know, trying to uh, do our part, wear our masks, and uh, don't congregate with a bunch of people and uh, just trying to stay healthy. But it's been, uh, you know, it's been a good, active, uh, you know, kind of a busy uh, information gathering time, uh, like it always is at this part of the off season. So it's all been good. You have, you have some, uh, some big name guys potentially uh, on your radar there. Yep. Uh, you care to comment on any of them, there, Mike? <laughs> I think it's I think it's a little too early to comment on them. Uh, you know, we're we're doing you know we're doing all of our homework on all those guys, and uh, you know we're there, it's it's a it's a really it's a really good uh, class of free agents this year. There's uh, uh, you know we'll know a little bit more after the uh, you know the non the tender date, which is which is coming up in the uh, next couple uh, in the next day or so about who's you know what what the actual field of players is really going to look like. Uh, then uh, we'll start implementing our, our, our off-season plan. And, uh, you know, as we always do, we'll make adjustments along the way. But, uh, you know, we're going, to, uh, we're going to, you know, be our, our normal aggressive selves and, uh, and, try and uh, you know, try and put together a team that, uh, that can win the championship again. So explain the non-tender um, deadline date, which is, I believe, tomorrow. I'm just reading this now. So explain what that means. Yeah, the non-tender date is is when you have uh, a players under control if you if you tender tender them a contract or not, and if you don't, uh, obviously they become a free agent. Okay, and what would that tender be? What's that number? Uh, the number would be uh, whatever the, their arbitration number could possibly be. It's, it's uh, uh, you know the numbers aren't set in stone, but uh, you, we we all have a uh, a general uh, kind of idea of of what what our, our tolerances for each each of these players and uh, right. uh you know if you feel that uh, the player if you you want to sign that you want to keep that player's contract uh, or you, you could either non-tender them and then it'll become a free agent so when do you expect the bigger names you know the springers the real mutos the lemayhews like the the top seven to ten names to to sign could that kind of last into january february or do you think that's going to happen here in the next couple weeks you know, I don't know. You never know on these things. Uh, you know, it, uh, certain years it takes a little longer than others. But uh, uh, you know, uh, often these uh, these free agent seasons, you, you get a uh, a top flight player go off the board quickly. Uh, you know, I, I'm not, I have no idea what uh, what this year's uh, uh, free agent season is going to look like as far as timing. But there's a lot of really good players out there. So. Uh, you know, there's uh, and there's teams that want to uh, fill fill some spots with some great players. So uh, it's uh, it's a good uh, it's, a, it's a good way to uh, kind of facilitate uh, the the uh, the roster and and kind of you know put you in position to go into spring training as uh, as a as a really good team. So Mike, we're having you on today as we talk to Mike Rizzo, the GM and president of baseball ops of the Nationals, to talk about Giving Tuesday and the Nats Academy, which is fantastic. For those of our listeners that aren't as familiar with the Nats Academy, can you, can you kind of fill us in on what they do? And, again, a $100 donation gets you a, a, a Nats Academy face mask. You can go to natsacademy.org to learn more. Did we lose, did we lose Mike? Sounds like we may have lost him. Mikey. D- Drabby, what happened? Did we lose him? We lost, lost him in the plug. Rizzo. <laughs> R-I-Z-Z-O. Well, hopefully I wonder, we'll get him back will he, on. Will he say on the record, like, I mean, it's obvious they're going to go after another starting pitcher, right? I mean, they're not uh, just going to rely on I don't know if it's obvious. Did I mean, you see the little uh, Instagram stuff that uh, Juan Soto did? No. So I don't remember whose specific Instagram he was responding to, yeah. but it was it had to do with Trevor Bauer being available. Mm-hmm. And Juan Soto did one of those Instagrams with the uh, – the eyeball emoji, like a bunch right. of like eyeballs, like he's but, like, paying he's attention. Interested. And yeah. then there was like a little back and forth. We can get into that later. But anyway, Mike, when we lost you, I was talking about the Nats Academy. For for some of our listeners that don't that don't know as much about it as we do, can you fill them in? 
Well, it's it's such a, it's a, such a great program we have. It's near and dear to my heart. Uh, I've been on the board of directors since uh, since this thing started years ago, uh, and uh, you know the Nationals Foundation is uh, you know we're raising money for the for the youth youth baseball academy. Uh, it's it's in Southeast. It's in a uh, it's in a part of town that's that's in need uh, of uh, of some uh, of some good things in happening and uh, you know the, you know the kids are in uh, the kids in the community that surround the academy you now they've been hardest hit by this uh, by this uh, COVID pandemic and uh, it's something that uh, you know we're trying to uh, really uh, uh, raise some money to uh, to raise to raise their spirits and to raise them up. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's a it's a youth baseball and softball academy, but uh, uh, they learn so much more. You know, there's there's uh, education. There's there's uh, you know there's a, there's a place for these uh, for these uh, people to go to. You know, after school and uh, and and you know, it's a safe environment. Uh, they're uh, they're educated. There's classrooms. There's uh, there's a kitchen. There's uh, there's baseball. There's uh, there's lifestyle skills, and uh, it's just such a uh, it's just such a, uh, a unique and, and beautiful experience over there. It's uh, it's something that uh, if people I know this is a, this you know everyone wants people to donate to their cause uh, you know at this time of year. But if you want to keep your money local and and help some really needy, some really wonderful, some really uh, uh, deserving uh, 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 kids, uh, this is something that uh, you should really think about. And uh, it's it's an it's an awesome cause, and they do an awesome job over there at the Nat- Nationals uh, Baseball Academy. And you know, a lot of your players have been involved, and now a former player. I was just looking at the Nationals Philanthropies Twitter account, and they were giving a thank you to Michael A. Taylor, who was always part of sport in the community. Talk about. Um, you know, you're going to lose a player, and Michael Taylor was just a great person. Oh yeah, yeah, great. You know, he's a great kid that uh, we drafted, signed, and developed as a shortstop, made him into a, a, a really good defensive outfielder, uh, and uh, he was a credit to the to the Nationals' name on the front of his jersey. He, he conducted himself beautifully, and uh, uh, he was a, a, a big. Uh, contributor and and a huge factor there at the at the Nationals uh, Baseball Academy along with Ian Desmond over the years and Anthony Rendon and and uh, uh, Sean Doolittle and and you know Ryan Zimmerman the list goes on and on everybody who's ever uh, touched uh, uh, laid laid their feet down here in Washington DC has uh, has been a great contributor over there uh, we've got some current players now and uh, and uh, you know Trey Turner and Juan Soto they're always over there they're, they're guys that uh, that take the time and uh, and travel over to southeast to make those kids uh, feel a little feel uh, a little bit better make their lives a little bit easier and uh, and they're obviously great contributors uh, of uh, of the foundation you can follow on Twitter at nats for good the number four and of course if you want to donate natsacademy.org. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about it. There was an article in the Washington Post about Spencer Keyboom, who was a catcher in the organization. I think he's just 28 years old, of course, Carter's brother, and he's walked away from the game. And as I was reading the article and I knew that you were coming on the show, I wanted to kind of get your tale of what it was like for you. This is a tough decision. Reading that article, I could see, you know, it's a, he's, a, he's a competitor, but at some point the fire went away. And he decided to walk away from the game, and I was thinking, well, what was it probably like for Mike Rizzo years ago? Well, it was, it was the same thing. You know, they uh, they they had to rip the jersey off me. I went kicking and screaming. Probably <laughs> uh, uh, probably wasn't wasn't the, the same thing as, as Boomer did. Uh, you know, this is an intelligent kid who, uh, who who you know graduated from college. He's got got a, a very uh, a very good life ahead of him, and uh, he just felt that uh, when when you do lose that edge and you do lose that that love and that hunger for it, it's it's just so difficult to to continue. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, with the options he has, and uh, uh, you know, with the with the things that uh, that he has in his life, uh, you know, he he felt uh, I'm sure he felt that. Uh, uh, he, you know, he'll, his life will continue. He'll have a happy life, and it'll be just without baseball. So, uh, uh, you know, different players go through it at, uh, at different ways. Uh, you know, I was lucky enough uh, when I uh, when I w- was finished as a player, I stayed in the, and stayed in the game and uh, in a different uh, in a different uh, job and a different uh, uh, career path. But uh, I'm not sure what Boomer's uh, uh, career path is going to be, but he'll be a success wherever he's at because he's an intelligent kid. Uh, with a good heart, and uh, was uh, again a good, uh, a good uh, uh, representative of the Washington Nationals when he was here.
Where are you with his, uh, his brother? Because he is such a big prospect that everybody's been talking about for a couple years now. And it seemed like, you know, because the bat just didn't produce the way you guys expect and what he did in the minor leagues, it seemed like from afar, Mike, that it, it just seemed like you guys were losing a little faith there. Um, what, what sort of the well, status? You would, be, you would be inaccurate. You would be inaccurate. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you, in, your, in your 20 second commercial assessments that you've been yeah. doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, you'd, you'd be inaccurate. We, uh, there's uh, the guy that, uh, we have, uh, we have great faith in, we have uh, high expectations for, and, uh, we felt that, uh, his game came a long way in, in, in 2019 and 20, learned a new position at the major league level. Well, we've got high hopes for him. We think he's going to be a great player for us. And, uh, and uh, you know, if you look at the very small sample size early in his career, uh, you know, Anthony Rendon went through the same thing. Several players go, go through the same thing early in their career. And if you start judging people by 100 or 200 major league at-bats uh, when they're starting to play a new position in the league, you'd be in trouble. And uh, we're certainly not going to do that. We've got all the confidence in the world in him. And mm-hmm. we think he's going to be a hell of a player. What about this uh, this kid? Uh, I say he's kid. He's 33. But uh, this Cuban, Yadiel Hernandez, who I think played the majority of his career in, in the Cuban League. But you he had guys, a big homer or something, I remember, right? You guys brought him in. What's his deal? Well, we signed, we signed him year, uh, about four years ago, and he was one of our international signings. He was an older player. He played in the Cuban national team for years and was a really good player over there. Uh, and uh, came to the minor leagues and hit all the way through uh, every stop that we had. And, and uh, in, in, uh, in 2019 in Fresno, I, I forget what he hit, but something like 340 or something like that. And uh, we brought him up to the big leagues. We know he could hit. Uh, and uh, he showed flashes of it at the big league level last year. And, uh, uh, you know, he's a, guy, he's a kid who loves to play baseball. And uh, when the season was over here, he immediately went to, uh, to the Mexican League and started playing down there. And he's raking again down there. So uh, the guys, the guy can hit, and uh, we feel that uh, you know our international scouting uh, uh, staff did a hell of a job with signing him. It was kind of an unconventional sign because of his age, but uh, you know when you can hit, we'll find a place for you. And and this guy can hit. Mm-hmm. Like so many things are changing. I'm just wondering, and I, I would imagine you have a bunch of contingencies. How are you preparing, given the COVID and pandemic situation, for spring training and the upcoming season? Well, we'll put our we're going to put our uh, our best foot forward and have our our, uh, our protocols in place. Uh, our number one priority, as it was in this year's spring training, uh, would would be uh, our the safety and uh, of our our players, staff, and their families, and that's that's not going to change. And uh, we will we will make sure that uh, that everyone's safe and and uh, and stays healthy and uh, and can uh, can play for us. But most importantly, we. Uh, you know, we need to care for our, our, our people, and uh, that's, that's going to be first and foremost on our minds. Have you heard from some of the guys who opted out, like Ryan Zimmerman and Ross, who opted out? Are they going to try and get back with the Nationals this season? Well, Ross is under contract uh, with us. Uh, he's, uh, you know, he's planning on playing. Uh, Zim, uh, we had a few conversations uh, uh, early uh, at the latter end of the, uh, of the season last year. Uh, I'm not sure if he's made a decision yet or, or not, but uh, I've spoken to both of those guys, and uh, you know, both the both their individual uh, uh, assessments are different. They're, they're in, in their career, so uh, we'll keep we'll keep on top of both of them. But uh, we're uh, you know we're we're certainly uh, we're certainly going to have Joe Ross uh, on the team next year, and, and Zim will he'll, uh, we'll have to make a decision on him and. Uh, depending on what his uh, his feelings are with his family, Mike. Um, yeah, I don't know how much control you have over this. Probably not much. I'm, I don't know if this is a city thing or a league wide thing, but I can't imagine you guys can afford to go into another season without fans. Now, maybe it's limited. Maybe it's twenty percent full or whatever. But the Phillies announced they lost one hundred and fifty million uh, last year without the fans. I, I'm assuming that you guys are probably in that same ballpark. Um, so would you guess that going forward, once, you know, opening day starts, whenever that is, you guys are going to have fans, or you have to leave that up to the city and the league? Well, it's certainly going to be up to the city and the league and, and uh, all the scientists and, uh, and you know, people uh, way smarter than me to make those decisions. Uh, we're going to have contingency plans uh, uh, that uh, that are going to be available to us uh, in all different scenarios, but uh, 
but you know we're uh, we're looking forward to uh, we're looking forward to you know keeping our players healthy and and, uh, and having a good baseball season. That's that's what we can control on the baseball operations side, and that's you know that's where, how we're going to move forward in the off season. Were the winter meetings canceled, or are they still scheduled? <clears throat> The winter meetings are going to be remote. They will be. They we will have them, uh, oh, okay. but they will be. Uh, they'll be remote. Oh, okay, gotcha. So how does that work? Like normally, you'd go around in the hallway and you talk to a guy and you know, do your your, your discussions or whatever. How how does that happen now? Just phone calls, well, old school. That, yeah, I think you'll. I think you'll do it uh, by phone and uh, and you know we've we've had everyone's touched base with everybody just about uh, already. You know, you have your. Uh, you have your your conversations, your early conversations with with a lot of teams that you match up with, and uh, you kind of show you kind of tell them what their uh, you know what your ideas are for the off season if there's a match and that type of thing. And then uh, as things get closer to uh, to spring training, I think you see those those conversations kind of uh, uh, you know move forward, and uh, and then then uh, you know the, that's what, that's how deals are made. But uh, I think that uh, you know with the uh, with the advent of, of doing, the, you know, of not having an in-person uh, winter meetings, you'll you'll see a lot more uh, a lot more uh, meetings being done by Zoom and by uh, by phone calls, which uh, I think that uh, that you know we can get our jobs we can get our jobs done that way. 